awesome. So we've covered sort of the insane, insane, insane power of positivity and why it's so important to never, 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 never criticize. And I, I want to share with you now like a, a game changing epiphany that like changed so much for me when I learned it, when I realized it. Um, and so let's go over to the computer. Let's start going with it. So it's about Mark Twain. So Mark Twain, right? Um, you know, he lost his temper occasionally and he would write these letters that were so, so, so mean. Like, oh my God, they were so, so, so destructive and, and they just like would, because remember like, you know, in this time period, like they didn't have like phones really, or they, didn't, they couldn't really like text people. And so like writing letters is like their way of expressing their hatred and how mean and, and mad they are and all that stuff. And so he wrote a letter like all the time that was super mean. He wrote a letter to this one guy and like said that he, the thing for him was a burial permit. And all he had to do was speak. And he would like literally get him a burial permit and like put him in a grave and kill him, which was like, dude, that's like so mean. Like that's insane, right? Um, another time he wrote to an editor, this guy who was like editing his papers, right, doing work for him, and said that he should like suggest to the guy that edited his paper and said to improve his spelling and punctuation that his brain was made of mush and his decayed brain should like retain its suggestions on its own. And he was like super, super mean and always insulting these people and it was terrible, right? And it put out all this negative energy, this negativity that totally crushed his image and crushed the way people thought about him and made people super upset, right? Like they did not want to be uh, associated with this guy who was like ridiculously mean. Um, it was just so, so, so destructive and so sad. Um, so as it goes on and on and on, like he realizes that he needs to change, right? Um, because like, Oh my god, you can't like force other people to change. You gotta like start with, you know, the only person that you can control. And the only person you can control is yourself, right? And so, like, all the improvement that you desire in your life, or all the change that you want, or, or all the positive impact, like, it's gotta start with you being positive. It's gotta start with you succeeding and you having that success. And it's so much better, like, from a purely selfish standpoint, to improve yourself than to worry about what other people are doing wrong or to worry about like all the mistakes that other people are making. Cause like who the heck cares about the mistakes other people are making? Just focus on like objectively looking at your mistakes and then improve yourself by fixing them, right? And then like make yourself better. And as you make yourself better, what's cool is you'll drag other people up with you. And so as you improve yourself, other people will naturally want to follow you and you'll start to guide them and become a leader and just naturally grow with them, right? Because you have put in the effort to work on the most important person on the planet, which is you, which is like so cool that you're going through this course and all this work. It's like, that's exactly what you're doing, right? You wanna improve yourself and don't like complain about other people or don't complain about the snow on your neighbor's roof when your own doorstep is unclean, said Confucius. Like you've gotta deal with your problems first before you can help other people. Um, this idea that like when, when all the air masks fall, in the airplane and you know, the, the plane is, is crashing and you need to like put on this oxygen mask. Like you need to put your oxygen mask on before helping other people. Because like, if you pass out while putting on somebody else's mask, you're gonna get screwed, right? But you put your mask on first and then other people pass out, like you can still put the masks on them and they'll still survive and they'll be okay, right? But you can't pass out first, you gotta save yourself first. So powerful, so huge. And so like, um, when, when Carnegie, when Dale was really, really young and he was trying to impress people, there was this one guy who, who wrote him a letter and he, he like asked him a question, he wrote him back and at the bottom of this letter, he there was this little message and the message it said, you know, he had this whole letter and then it said, dictated but not read. And so Carnegie, he, he, Dale, he thought this was oh so, so cool um, and he thought it was like a huge sign of being big and, and busy and important. Um, and even though like he wasn't the slightest bit busy, like he thought this was the coolest thing ever. And so he sent him a reply and he wanted to make like a really, really good impression on him. And so in this reply, he's, he put in his note and then at the end he wrote dictated but not read. Um, just to kind of like flex and look cool and, and, and have fun. Um, and it's interesting, like I, I've sort of like applied this now because now, like, now you've got like Siri, right? And so with Siri, like you can just like quickly send out a voice message to somebody or reply to a text. And it's super, super useful. Like if you're you know, driving somewhere or going somewhere, you can be like, you know, hey Siri or, or Google or whatever you have, right? Um, and be like, hey, read my messages. And then you can like audibly reply. Um, and so it's kind of like a nice thing to use. Like if you're replying to somebody and you're just sending them a message through like Siri, um, cause then you can get through like way, way, like tons, tons, tons of more messages. Um, but it also goes back to that concept of like 
focusing on quality over quantity and also training people to treat you the way that you want to be treated so if you only want to get a couple of messages because you're freaking busy and you got stuff to do then you don't really want to like constantly be replying to them with Siri and then being like dictated but not read um, because it's gonna train people to like constantly come to you and reach out to you for stuff that just maybe doesn't really matter um, which, which sucks, right? Because you want to be like focusing on only the important, only the top things. They're going to have the biggest impact in your career and on whatever you're working on, right? And when you focus only on that 20%, it's going to give you the 80% of results and you kind of ignore the rest of the crap. Um, you'll start to have significantly greater impacts and, and so much more success with like everything you do because you're focusing on what matters, which is like so, so, so important. Um, and so Dale Carnegie sends out this letter and Basically, the guy he sent it to, like, scribbled it out and returned the letter and said, um, your bad manners are only exceeded by your bad manners. And so, like, he criticizes uh, Carnegie's letter and he criticizes the work that he did and he criticizes what, how he signed it off at the end. And he basically says, like, he was super bad. He was a mean and, and he was, like, really, really, like, harsh on him and was like, this is so, so, so uh, inappropriate. This, I can't believe you did this. Can you believe this is insane? You can't do that. And he was negative and he criticized him and he brought him down and he like insulted him. And in Carnegie's mind, like he was natural, he was human and he resented this so much. And he was so upset and he was just, it was such a mean thing to say. And he resented it so sharply that when he read of the death of this guy that he sent the letter to, years and years and years and years later, when he read of this guy's death, he was he's ashamed to admit it, but he was, like happy and the thought of this guy 10 years later the only thing he could think of when he heard of this guy's death um was the hurt that he had put on him and he like hurt him like years and years and years and years ago um the hurt that he gave carnegie persisted in his mind um and so like if you want to stir up you know resentment and negativity and hatred um, and all these awful, 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 awful emotions that will last tomorrow and live across decades and endure until death, then all you have to do is indulge in a little stinging criticism. No matter how certain you are that this criticism is justified, it will come across as the meanest thing ever and it'll crush the other person and make them despise you. Which is terrible, right? Remember that like everyone is driven by emotion, right? So if you make somebody feel bad, like they're gonna remember that for so long. And they remember, oh, he was that guy who, who hurt me. It was so upset and I just couldn't freaking believe it. And so it's gonna crush any possible connection that you have and just destroy the pride and, and the prejudice and, and everything is just gone, right? Because like criticism, it, it causes such negativity and it's so, so awful, like it kills, criticism kills. You look at um, Thomas Hardy, who was like one of the finest novels, like the best fiction writer in like all of English literature. Like this guy literally gave up his entire writing career and everything he had because of criticism. So like a ton of people, they read his work and they said, oh, this is bad. And they criticized and criticized and criticized and criticized. And it destroyed his mind because all he did was listen to these haters. And he freaking quit. Gave up fiction forever. It drove Thomas Clatterson, the English poet, to suicide. This guy killed himself because of criticism. And you see it so often like with social media or, or whatever, right? And people are like getting bullied on Facebook. It's just this bogus. And it crushes their public percent. Like what everybody thinks about them, it, it gets destroyed, right? And it destroys their self-confidence, destroys their personality, destroys their being, and they feel awful about themselves. And they literally kill themselves because of how negative they feel, because of this internal negativity. It, like, criticism will drive them to suicide to defend themselves. Like, that's how poisonous this, this, this toxin is. You cannot criticize, it, it's terrible. When Ben Franklin was like ridiculously young. So, you know, like, like Ben Franklin was growing up and he was young and he realized that he had to become so diplomatic in handling people. Um, and it was so, so important. And so as he goes off and he's older and older and he's going to France and he's becoming like the American ambassador and he's making tons of friends and, and, and influencing everybody politically and just having this huge amount of growth. You know, they ask him, what's the secret 
to his success. What's his big secret? And his secret is, it's very, very simple. He says, he will speak ill of no man or woman or whatever. He will never criticize, ever. He never, 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 never speak poorly of anyone. And he speaks good of everyone, everyone. Um, he always praises, he always compliments, he always points out the positive things. And he's just insanely, insanely, insanely positive. Because any fool can criticize, condemn, and complain. And most fools do. But it takes character and self-control to be understanding and forgiving. You must speak well. A great man shows his greatness by the way he treats little men, by connecting with them believing in it. Um, and there's this really, really great example, and I think we'll kind of finalize it here because this is so, so, so powerful. It's such a huge concept. Bob Hoover, he was this really, really famous test pilot. And, you know, Bob, he, he went to tons and tons and tons of air shows. And he would perform, and he would go up in his plane, and he would have, like, the best performance ever. And, and everybody, like, loved him, and, and oh my god, that's a really, really good plane. And so one day, he, he's in his plane, and he's got, like, you know, his, his friends and his wife or whatever. And he's going to this huge, huge air show. And about 300 feet in the air, like, he's, he's super, super high up in the air. And everybody's sort of, like, in the crowd below him. And they're all like, yay, go Bob, you're awesome. And they're, like, super excited, super positive, super cheerful, super happy. Um, he's in this air. He's in the air. And, like, all of a sudden, his propeller just, like, freaking stops. Um, and, like, he's freaking out, man. And he has to, like, maneuver this plane to the ground. Um, and like landed on this runway and it like seriously messes up his plane like the plane like like freaking like it is legit it's super super damaged um, and thankfully nobody got hurt but it was like very very dangerous dangerous situation like he had to like crash land this thing and like it was it was really close um, but thankfully nobody got hurt so it was all okay it was all positive all happy uh, and it was like yay yeah super awesome yay um, it all worked out um, and so he goes and he looks, he's like, what the heck happened, right? Um, and so the first thing he does is he inspects the airplane's fuel. And sure enough, the World War II propeller plane that he'd been flying was fueled with jet fuel rather than gasoline. Um, which, you know, made the propeller stop. He just, the freaking wrong kind of fuel destroys the plane. Um, and you can expand this, right? Think about this in all aspects of your life. like. You know, what kind of, like if you're an athlete, right, and you're trying to like get that six, six like where's this, there's the race coming up in a couple of weeks and I really, really, really want to win. It's like an 800 dash and there's this huge competition for like everybody at school. Um, and whoever wins, like it's a giant cake and it's gonna be the best thing ever and I can't wait to win it. It's gonna be the best thing ever. And so like for me, right, like I've got to train, I got to go hard um, and you know, get in the zone. Like if I eat total crap and junk food every single day up till that race and I just like fuel my body with complete garbage, like, how do you think I'm gonna run? I'm gonna run terribly, right? Um, and so if you put like the wrong fuel in your life, if you, like, this would be like negative fuel, right? Negative fuel. Um, think about it like negative emotions, a negative environment, like evil, evil, destructive, negative forces and thoughts in your life. If you fuel those into yourself, they will destroy your potential and your growth. Um, and what you need to do is you need to get rid of that, right? Destroy it. And instead give yourself the right Fuel, right? The right fuel. And so like all this, what you're feeding yourself, you know, like protein, steak, eggs, you know, solid, solid protein shakes, um, all this MCT oil, you know, really, really powerful, powerful, um, like training diets and, 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 you know, broccoli and all that good stuff. You want to feed yourself the right fuel so that you can have the best performance possible and not freaking stall out halfway through the race, cramp, and then fall down on the side of the track. Um, which is what happened to one of my friends just a little bit ago, like a week ago. He runs 200 meters, cramps, and like, he just falls, why? Because like he hadn't been training, and he had the wrong fuel in his body. He ate like, uh, gummy bears, and all this junk food, and, and candy, and like a ton, a ton, a ton of sugar, um, like two hours before the race, and just a ridiculous amount of crap went into his body. And it showed in his performance, right? It fundamentally crushed his ability to, 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 to freaking run the race, right? Um, I had this other friend, Evan, coolest guy ever, amazing, amazing runner, running this 5K together, and like after mile one, he, he stops, 
and he, he bends over on the side of the on the side of the course he just starts barfing and throwing up and puking out his guts because like two minutes before the race he ate a massive 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 banana and it was just like so much fiber and, and potassium and it was so huge and like that's coming all out of his system because he gave himself the wrong fuel and so it's so important like as you do anything in life you give yourself the right fuel um and that right fuel again is positive energy positive emotions positive thoughts and then obviously you know get yourself some protein and some fat and you'll be solid um, and so he goes back to the airport and he asks to see the mechanic, right, who serviced his airplane. Now this mechanic, he is freaking out. He's like, oh shoot, I just like basically made this guy crash. Ah, what am I gonna do? And you know, Bob, he comes up and he stands up to this young man. And this young man, he's got like tears streaming down his face and he's so sad, he's so distraught. Because remember, people know like when they mess up, they know that they mess up. And he's like expecting Bob to go berserk on him and be like ridiculously negative and just like scream at him and be super mean and like, cause like he basically messed up his plane. It was a very, very, very expensive plane. Um, and it basically just got ruined and almost killed three people. And you can obviously imagine like this, like Hoover is ridiculously pissed. Um, and this guy thought he was about to get it in for him. Yet he didn't scold the mechanic. He didn't even criticize him. He did not criticize him. And instead he put a big arm around this guy, gave him a hug and did one of the most important things you can ever do. And he gave him faith, he gave him belief. And he said, to show you that I'm sure you'll never do this again, I want you to service my F-51 tomorrow. Can you believe that? Everything changed. The way this guy perceived him, the way this guy worked, the way he like connected with this guy, it was so, so deep, deeper than any other person he had ever worked with because he realized that there was this obstacle and he overcame the obstacle and moved on, took the temporary loss, took the temporary pain, and said, you know what? We're gonna have a better future together. We're gonna grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And he said, why would I fire you? I just invested like, you know, this, this plan in him. Um, another really great example, I had this one business mentor I had, and like, he had this, this guy, oh my God, oh my God, so many great examples. Uh, and this one example, basically he mismanaged an account and he like made, uh, he had this client and the client like took in like like 150 grand um, And basically just like washed away with it disappeared with all this money and just like ran away And they lost like 150 grand in an accounting scandal And so this guy he's an accountant and he goes up to his boss and he's freaking out just like this this engineer was This like this mechanic was and he's like oh my god it's the worst thing ever I'm gonna get fired and his boss says why would I fire you? I just invested 150,000 in your education. And that mindset shift changed everything. This was one of like the most loyal employees ever from that point forward because he understood that his boss cared about him. Another really phenomenal example, uh, Ray Dalio. He wrote this insane book um, called Principles. It's like ridiculously good. It's, it's insane for principles. Um, for like collaborative growth and workplace community and, and souls. I mean, it's insane. I can't recommend it enough. I'll have the book for you below. Um, and in principles, he, he talks about like all of, of the team working and it's just insane. And he has this one guy when he's starting up this huge, huge, huge head fund hedge fund and basically like he he makes all the trading algorithms and he does all the asset management and one day you know ray he goes to him and he says hey dude um our client wants to buy like two hundred thousand dollars worth of this stock go buy two hundred thousand dollars worth of this stock like right now and like a week and a half later the stock goes up a whole whole bunch because they're super smart guys and they're making tons of money and, and maybe it was two million i think it was yeah he's like buy two million dollars worth of this stock and so the stock goes up like 10%. And so the profit on that was, was about $200,000, right? And so Ray goes over to him and he's like, hey, our, our client's really happy that the investment went well. Can you like sell half of it and take a hundred grand out? So he goes over to his computer and he realizes that he's got all this cash just sitting here and he never freaking bought the stock. And so he has to go over to his boss. He has to go over to Ray and say, um, Ray, you know, I didn't buy this stock. That 200 grand, it, it's not, it doesn't exist because if he didn't buy the stock. And you can imagine like how pissed off this guy would be. He just lost hundreds of thousands of dollars that his client's expecting pay to him today by not following a simple command. And yet what Ray does is so profound. He looks at him in the eye and says, oh dude, you know what? That sucks, but it's not a huge deal. I care, but not that much. That's okay, I guess we're done with that. And instead of like looking at this guy and firing, cause this guy totally thought he was gonna get fired. He thought he was gonna be pushed out. 
it strengthens this connection between the two. And he says, you know what, why would I fire you? I just invested $100,000, $200,000 in your education. So think about these mistakes, not as mistakes, but as investments in education. Um, and it changes everything. Um, I remember like when I was starting out in investing and trading, I was like, oh, well, I guess I just lost all this money. And so many people, they lose so much money when they start investing. They call it like market tuition because they don't spend like the 10 minutes to read a book like nine to noon um, and totally change their educational base so that they can start making money instantly. Um, and, and so it's this idea that like, you wanna take these negative losses, these negative things and put a positive spin on them. Don't criticize and instead focus on the positivity. Focus on the positive outcome, the positive growth that can lead to the most success possible. And that's really like the number one thing that you can do to just have insane, insane levels of growth in all aspects of your life. It is so, 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 so powerful. And I, it's insane, it's, it's so great. Um, and the instant that you can eradicate negativity and focus instead on like all this positive, positive, positive growth, like like everything changes. Um, and it's just, it's so different. And so please, please, please just be good to everybody. Don't fall into the trap of short-term gain through criticism and all this crap. It's just not worth it. You wanna focus on connecting people and being good to them. Because when you're nice to people and you're good to people, it all comes back, it all returns right back home to you. And it changes absolutely everything. And it's just so, so, so powerful. So I hope you guys got a ton of value from this module. Go out there, apply it, crush it. Um, and I will see you in the next lesson. Thank you so, so much. Bye.